Sometimes we're left with no choice but to use supports on our 3D prints. In a previous video, I demonstrated how with just a few changes to the settings in Cura, we could reduce the print time and make them easy to remove. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove supports from areas where they just aren't needed by using support blockers. When we check that box in Cura to add supports, Cura looks for the area where it thinks we need them. Sometimes Cura is wrong, but we can eliminate the unneeded support. I'm going to demonstrate the use of support blockers on three different project types. This will help us save time and material. Let's start up Cura and get your printer pushing plastic. This is a part I drew up. It has no purpose in life other than to be printed and need supports while doing so. I already have a pre-slice, so let's take a quick look at it. And you can tell, see that it needs supports under this large area. This area with the overhang on the opposite end. And there's three holes that require supports. The first thing that stands out to me is we don't need support in those three holes. They'll build upon each other and we can get those without wasting filament or time so let's put some put support blockers in there we'll click the model we'll come down here and click support blocker click the model again and it puts this transparent cube in there click the cube and use your move feature and just like any other model that you would move around you can move that support blocker I'm going to add a second support blocker to this hole back here. So we'll click the model. We'll click support blocker. I'm going to click the model again. It puts the blocker on there. And again, we're going to go to move. We're going to move it up. And make sure it goes through the entire hole. I'm going to leave the third hole the way it is. All we really need to do is block the red area. Uh, Cura, re Cura refers to it as an overlap area Make, or any place where the support blocker meets the overlaps the model how's that so let's slice this and see what we get hit the preview you can see we got rid of the filament and the supports in those two holes the third hole remains the same we still have it on the large overhang on the back and over here on the opposite side. Let's go back to prepare and add another support blocker for this third hole. Third hole. So click the model, click support blocker. We're going to move it. First thing I'm going to do is go up. But this time I'm not going to go the full depth of the hole. I'm going to go about a halfway. And let's slice that. I'll we'll take a look at it. You can see we have support on this side of the hole, but when we spin it around, you can see that it's not completely filled with that, with the uh, support. Let's go back to prepare. Move the support blocker the way it should be. We'll slice it and take another look. And now we got rid of the support in all of those holes. So let's take a look at this area over here. We're already down to 2 hours and 13 minutes. Let's see if we can shave a little bit more off. Let's go back to prepare. We'll add a support blocker by clicking the model. Support blocker. I'm going to click the model again. we got our transparent block. This one I'm going to move along the center more towards the center. I'm going to scale it. Now I'm going to turn uniform scaling off because I only want it to go along the, the long side of the model. So let's turn uniform scaling off. We'll grab the, the red bar and maybe a little bit more. Depending on how close you're zoomed in, depends on how well you're Zoom is going to work, or your scale is going to work. Let's move that back. A little bit more. Okay. So we're overlapped 
on all sides there where I want to be. Let's slice it and see what happens. First thing you can see is we added a little bit of time. In the preview, you can see where it removed this large section of support. But what had happened is the support, now the nozzle comes over the front, down the side, then it moves over to the other side, and it repeats that process rather than going straight across. It takes longer to do that. It takes more filament. So I'll go back to prepare. Click on that uh, support blocker, and you can just go ahead and remove it. Slice it. You'll see that we're back to where we were. That shaved five minutes off again. Let's add another support blocker just for discussion purposes right in the middle. And that'll do just to show you what happens here. We'll slice this. Take a quick look. And you can see we have just a large square cut out where the support blocker is. Now, not everybody prints the same objects. So let's take a look at another type and we'll apply the support blockers to it. Okay, now a lot of people print figures, action figures. I'm not sure what the right terminology is. I found this alien on uh, Thingiverse. I already have a pre-slice. Let's take a quick look. And that's a lot of support. Let's go back to the model and see what we can get rid of. There's an awful lot of red area on the head and there's some down here where the legs and the body meet. Let's start with that. We'll add us click the model, click support blocker, click the support blocker transparent block. We're going to move that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to scale. Again, make sure uniform scaling is turned off unless you want to go in all directions. So let's do that. Put it that way. I think we might have got everything. I'm going to move it more center to the body. I think we got it all. Oops, now, I'm too far into the hand. you got to be careful of that because I know it will need support to get those fingers. So we'll just slide that back over and I'm going to slide it towards the back just to make sure I'm not touching anything I shouldn't be. And let's slice it and see what we got. And while that's slicing, I'm looking at what I want to try next. I can see up by the head, I can remove a lot of support. So let's see what we have right now. You can see we removed the support from the area where the legs and the body meet, but an awful lot of support going all the way up to the head. Let's go back to prepare. Click the model. Add a support blocker by clicking the model with the support blocker turned on. We're going to move the blocker. Just like we move any other model part. Move it to the front. I guess I went too far to the front. Move it down. And then back. And obviously we're going to have to scale this because this guy's got an awful big head. I happen to know a lot of people with big heads like that. Most of them think they're the supreme 3D printing overlords. They're on some of the groups. They'll give you a lot of bad information. A lot of good people in those groups, but be careful who you take advice from. All right. So we got our blocker in there. and Let's make sure we covered up all the areas if i zoom in here you'll see that i still have a little spot of red exposed that will cause support to run all the way up the back just to fill in that little area because we missed it i think we're good there let's slice this up and i'm sure we're going to see a savings how much i'm not sure but let's take a look and find out three hours 18 minutes not too bad compared to where we started i think it was uh four and a half hours so we removed all that support that was coming up to the front and the back to support the head. We're not adding support to where the legs and the body meet. We don't have much of a choice but to keep the support in the armpit and the finger area. I think 
this is about as good as we're going to do. If you're a person who prints a lot of figures like this and you have another idea, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And I know not everybody prints figures or mechanical. So let's move on to another type of project. Now, a lot of people like to print cosplay props. This is a helmet I found on Thingiverse. And I already have this one pre-sliced just to save time. We preview this. And that's a heck of a lot of support. Now, again, I've never printed a helmet. I don't know much about printing these. If there's somebody out there that can add to this, that'd be great. I'm going back to prepare, and we're going to look for where we can take support out. To me, it looks like we're definitely going to need it on this brim area. Up here, I'm not so sure. If I'm not sure about it, I'm not going to take it out. So I'm just going to focus on this one area in particular, which happens to be the largest area. This red up here at the top now this being a dome shape as the layers build upward they're also going to build inward upon each other so i know that's going to be self-supporting so let's add a support blocker to this helmet and we're going to get rid of that big old red area we're going to come over to scale typically i would turn uniform scaling off for this one I'm going to start with it on because it's pretty big. Might even have to use more than one support blocker to get this area taken care of. I'm not sure yet. Let's uh, move this and we're moving this like we would any other, any other model. We'll scale this up just a little bit. Now I'm going to scale it. Now I'm going to go and turn off uniform scaling. here you know I want to make sure I'm not covered any other red area actually looks pretty good it doesn't matter if I'm sticking out of the helmet like that as long as I'm not covered up anything I shouldn't but I'm covering up everything I should so we're gonna go ahead and slice this and while that's slicing I'm gonna look for anything else that I might be able to take out and again, if anybody has any suggestions, I'd love to hear them because I can apply that to other projects that I like to work on. And I'm sure some of the other watchers could learn a trick or two from anything you might have to add. Everybody has their own techniques. Let's take a preview. Okay, you can see we cut down our time. Well, I think it was one day, 16 hours to begin with. So we're down to one day, three hours, and all we did was remove that large area. At least we hope we did. And there it is. We removed a lot of support out of there. If you know anything about these helmets, you might be able to eliminate some of the support down the side. Possibly some here on the back, I'm not sure. There's a lot of detail on these helmets. The guys who model these things are amazing. You might not actually be able to add a support blocker right up the middle, but then again, that might add more time. But you found a few ways here where you can apply it to different projects, block off some of the support that Cura generates when there's absolutely no choice but to use support. This can save you time and filament. If you made it this far, you're one of the great ones. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash the bell, live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe so I can continue to grow this channel. Thanks for watching.